all right happy friday everybody welcome back to another video as you can see behind me it's miserable it's raining uh but at least we got some good stuff going today i got some parts for the truck those straps for the u-joints so we'll be able to walk up these yokes with these be able to start rolling this machine around i got the front and the back to do now the drive shafts are proper length i'm still still trying to get this damn centerpiece in if you want to stop by and you know come try it out yourself feel free so i don't know how the hell that's getting in anyways we gotta start feeding cows so let's go do that we have to do a lot of bedding today because it's uh, wet we like to keep everybody nice and dry because it's cold also so you don't want cold wet cows that just spells pneumonia so let's go let's go get that going I just finished feeding some corn silage here in the bunk straight corn silage so it's kind of hard to feed in here because i got to come with the tractor and turn around in front of all the cows so it takes a little longer anyways we got to do bedding in this barn too after once we uh finish feeding at constance we're going to do bedding down at constance and bedding here so it's just terrible weather it's really slippery too almost ate shit a couple times the mix is made we're just gonna head down the road to the other farm and unload hopefully we don't spit out going up that hill well it's not looking good so far because i just got stuck crossing the train tracks the uh the crossing is kind of broken and it's a big bump and i just caught the back wheel and the whole tractor started spinning on the ice so we might not have a good time getting up this hill. I would imagine this means the four-wheel drive is off and this is on. Or is it the other way? I don't know. Either way, it doesn't seem like it's working very well. We're spinning. And we're done. Oh no. Come on. Oh, come on. That was me trying to put the diff lock on while we were running. Oh. Okay. Dip lock is on. This four wheel drive does not work here. That is the fucking problem we are facing here today. And we're just spinning. Oh. This stupid switch does not fucking work. Here, folks, like I uh, imagined, try not to put in the cabbage here when we back down. While I'm gonna run out of it. Uh, I just down shifted and I hauled my ass up that hill and we caught some gravel and got some traction, so that's pretty good. As for the four wheel drive, it don't work, we gotta fix that or look at it. It's one of those John Deere things, you know, just gotta tap on it and it'll work. Anyways, we made it. 
gonna have to put some sand and salt down, I think. All right, we're just moving all the cows off the pad here. There's not too much in between those ears. You think they would have figured it out by now, but they still don't know what's going on. Every morning, gotta push them off, tell them, get over there. Otherwise, we won't have any room to drive in with the tractor and feed because they just stand there. They won't move, so we gotta lock them over so we got room to feed. Just a little slow because well, the ground's hard on their feet, especially when it's frozen. Like I said, they're not too smart. They haven't figured it out yet, so. Anyways. All right, that's where they were yesterday. We just let them run around out in there, mow down whatever grass there is left. Did a pretty good job. Anyways, we're gonna close that gate. We won't let them go in there no more. open this up let them over so we can go feed hay on the other side trust me we're getting rid of wire gates in the future this is just pathetic they suck they always get tangled and they always get hooked on frozen clumps of dirt and they get kinked in the rip then we gotta tie them sucks a couple metal gates will replace this one day what a gray shitty day we're gonna put a lot of bedding down All right, just hooking on the bale shredder, Highland bale shredder. We gotta clean that off too. Got a couple soya bales out. Yeah, Got two soya bales I brought out. And get those loaded up and bring them down to Constance, shred them out. So we got forks in the back. I don't know if you can see forks. Anyways, open this damn window. Oh, the hinge is popping out. Hopefully not. <laughs> Paranoid. Anyways, get these forks and we can back it up and pick them up. With one hand. Oh, damn, son. Boom, baby, one in. Second one's always the hardest because you can't really see it. You just gotta commit to it. Oh, we got it. We got it. Cool. Now it's kind of teeter tottering here, but should be fine to go down the road like that. 
All right, so we stopped feeding so much uh, silage, round bale silage. We're feeding more hay now. So we used to feed uh, three silage bales a day. So one in the mix and two in the feeders. And now we've only got one in the mix and one in the feeder and we just fill the rest up with hay. So usually around two or three hay bales. So the young calves really like the silage. So that's what we want to leave it for, not for the cows because they get fat real quick. Just gonna move this feeder, get it out of the mud, and get it into the other mud. You know. It's a lot of mud. Anyways, we gotta do some bedding over there. I'm gonna make a bedding pack. Once that's nice and thick, it won't be as bad. Don't have to worry so much with the bulls when you feed them. You can leave the gate wide open, they don't really care. They're smart enough to know. They just want feed. So I'd give them a silage bill every now and again. If it was up to them, that's all they would eat. But I'd try to make sure they eat some hay too. I gave them some more bedding too, so these guys should be ready. Tip top shape for December 26th. Uh, they're gonna be breeding the fall group then. I'm thinking just the big guys and the new Hereford, not the new guys. The yearlings are gonna stay back all winter so they can grow. This black yearling is pretty nice for a yearling, I gotta say. He did a lot of work this, uh, this summer, so. Gonna give the young guys a break, get the old guys, old bulls, old mature bulls, get them breeding. Um, the oldest bull, you gotta be careful, these guys, they're like kicking. So that's still a yearling, and that's a couple year old. The oldest here, oh no, you're not the oldest. Anyways, they're in good shape. The newest one is a Hereford, and he was pretty he was from Rolling Acres, actually, that Hereford there. And we were concerned he was too fat and he wouldn't do the job, but he worked. He worked all summer and he did a pretty good job. So um, we actually put that new Hereford with uh, only 15 of our cows this summer because uh, we don't know what kind of oh, what kind of cast he's gonna make. So we want to make sure uh, he doesn't put out any 120 pound calves before we go ahead and put them all with the other cows. It's better to have uh, 15, uh, you know, 15 problem calvings than 95 or whatever, you know? So we're trying to limit our risk. So what we do with the spring, uh, the, the new yearlings too that we handpicked from our herd. We uh, only put them with 15 cows, so we can figure out what kind of calves they make. So next we gotta go do bedding for the uh, fall group in the barn. Uh, just do some soya straw bales. Uh, then after that, we have to decide, because we're having a gender reveal party for, uh, for my girlfriend Valerie uh, Sunday. And we're doing like a Tannerite. If you know what Tannerite is, you're cool. Anyways, if you don't know what Tannerite is, look it up. But we're using Tannerite with uh, uh, pink or blue powder, we don't know what color, but my brother's gonna mix it, he's gonna know the gender. And so you take a pew pew and you shoot it, and uh, you know, Tannerite does its thing and it, it, it reveals a big cloud of whatever color you chose. Anyways, I ordered that like two weeks ago from Cabela's and they're telling me it's coming in next week. So that's not good, I'm gonna either have to go there tomorrow or today today just to make sure they have it and get it otherwise uh, if I do it Saturday I have a feeling I'm gonna have to run it around a lot if they don't have it then I'm gonna be screwed so um, Saturday well, if it gives me an extra day to you know find out find a plan B or something so uh, I don't know what else I could do if that tannerite doesn't work we're thinking about just spray cans 
shooting spray cans with a the right color and have like a white canvas in the back or I don't know so uh, I also have to go help out at the abattoir today because they're short people so we got a lot of things to do and not much time all right that bedding's done just one bale and it did a whole job so it's a lot of straw in those bales all right so uh we gotta get that tote of uh, herbicide is empty, so we gotta bring it back to McEwen's. They're coming and they're gonna be replacing it with another full tote of herbicide. Um, we just have to load it up in the forks. It's pretty light. Um, just gotta make sure the hoses and everything don't get tangled up. It'd be nice if you could unplug this and if there was a valve, that would be handy. Um, just so that. Oh, there is a valve. <laughs> oh shit! I just gotta look in there. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna close that valve. And I'm gonna unhook this, just so that we can move everything better. All right, so that empty tote is ready to be loaded. Just waiting on Fred. He'll come by this pickup truck and. Or maybe a big truck, I don't know, probably a little truck. Probably a little pickup truck and uh, we'll swap, we'll swap totes. So, um, for now I gotta make a phone call to Cabela's, make sure they have some Tannerite in stock uh, and then figure out when I'm gonna go pick it up. Uh, I'm also gonna call the avatar, see if they really need me or not, because I gotta wait around for that, that uh, herbicide. So, I'm gonna saw wood in the meantime, but I don't want to be waiting around doing nothing. So it turns out I don't have to wait for the guy for the, the tote. He's got his own forklift so he can take care of that. And they don't even get the avatar. So I'm like, woohoo, I can do some stuff on my truck. So I had to take the drive shaft out again just so that I can actually tighten these straps down because, well, these are Allen keys now instead of an eight mil. Usually it's an eight mil hex. But that strips out, so now we gotta go from the end with an Allen key. Somehow that's better, but still a stupid fucking idea. So now we have to put the drive shaft almost at a 90 degree angle so we can get in with our Allen key and turn it. I hate Allen keys and I hate eight mil hex. So they all strip out, so this is still a stupid, stupid, stupid design. Another thing that Ford does that's stupid, but Whatever. All right, everything is tight and it fits beautifully. And I mean, I couldn't have measured better. I was thought for sure, I'm like, I measured this literally like, I think 10 times. They told me like different places to measure from. I measured from like spline to spline, like all the yolks off. And then they're like, no, you gotta put them back on. So I did that and so I gave him like, at the end, the final number. And I was like, there's no way, no way this is gonna be the right size. Cause you know, I had to measure from this plate to uh, the edge here. And uh, well, it turned out pretty good. I gotta say, I'm happy. I don't have to go back and forth. I drove back and forth enough. Okay, so that's in too. That went in pretty well. I was just thinking as I was tightening the last bolt, maybe I should put Loctite on everything. So I gotta take everything out again and uh, Loctite it. Duh. Anyways, so we'll go to Cabela's now. Um, you know, it's Friday, so I don't wanna be stuck in traffic. But So I gotta leave now. It says I can get there in 56 minutes, which is complete bogus. There's no way I can make it from here to Canada in 56 minutes. Uh, but it is all highway, so maybe I can. But anyways, I just don't want to get stuck in traffic. I gotta go pick up. I ordered it, so uh, it's on its way. So I can't really get it at the store. So I have to literally buy another pack of it, which is not really that big of a deal. You can never have too much Tannerite. Um, it's just kind of expensive and it's kind of things I don't want to spend money on right now so um, And then we got to go find some powder 
blue or pink powder. So I don't know where to get that. I'll have to do a couple searches quickly. Anyways, hey Howard. All right, we're just on our way to Cabela's. Got the whole family in the car, even the dog. Go get that Tannerite. Target acquired. 